Hi, I'm Lariel Moondagger. I'm the current Kingdom Regent of the Desert Winds, and we're a very widespread kingdom, which can make travel very difficult and nearly impossible to do in the winter. So I decided to create a series of tutorials in order to bring the arts and sciences to you, no matter where you are. So I hope you enjoy watching and learn a little something too. This is Sindari and I'm here to help you make a battle dress. A battle dress is specifically designed to allow a little bit more feminine curves and uh, also allow movement for fighting. There are two main pieces to a battle dress that we'll be discussing today and I'm going to show it to you so you have an example. Basically this is an empire waist which means that the waist hits way up high. So empire waist bodice or top piece and then that's the first piece that we'll be going over and then the second part is the skirt piece or the bottom skirt piece so we'll be breaking it down by that realize that the bodice can be done in many many different ways we'll be featuring a scoop neck type of bodice um, which you can do whatever makes you happy whatever makes you um, look good and then uh, we'll go ahead and go down through the bottom piece. Okay, I'm going to start with the bodice uh, piece and kind of take you through the steps of how I ended up doing it for me. Your mileage may vary. I realize everybody does a little different, but I'll teach you how to do this and then you can take off in your own creative pursuits, which is what this is all about. So um, the original bodice piece that came from this bodice was actually from a dress from this dress, just this piece right here. And then I decided to go kind of like this dress bodice, so I went ahead and used a top piece from this dress. And this is what the top piece from this dress looks like. Obviously, we have to transform this long piece into a short piece that fits the individual we're making it for. And so that's what you do, is you measure your, your widest part of your bust and your waist measurement, like we talked about, at your natural waist line. And then you use the bust measurement to find yourself a pattern, a bodice pattern that fits you. Don't worry about the waist measurement so much as the bust measurement, because that is the hardest piece to fit. Um, once you have that measurement, you can go to the store and find yourself whatever bodice piece looks good to you. Again, just look at the very top half. So, what I did for the lady I'm making this for is I went ahead and created the empire waist for her. And this is what this piece ends up looking at because we're cutting it off right here. So you go from this to this using the measurements from the individual and you can see how that fits like that. Okay, so we did that for both the front piece as well as the back piece. And I cut them off right where they need to be so that they're evil, even and even in level. And we'll go ahead and put that on our remaining piece of cloth. This particular piece has a center fold. Here is our fold line. Here is our selvage line. Everybody um, may be familiar with that. And I'm going to go ahead and place this front piece backwards right on my center fold. And then this one actually goes forward. Here's the center fold for that. Okay. So I'm going to pin this down, and then we're going to cut out. Okay, so we've got it all pinned out, and we're going to cut out the remaining front piece here. 
Uh, remember when you make your pattern that you transfer the markings from your original pattern piece to your new pattern piece and that when you, after you've cut it out, that you transfer the markings from the pattern to the material. However you choose to do that um, is whatever you're used to doing. So we'll go ahead and cut this out. And especially important, I think, is the darts. Making sure that you get a nice, good dart line. Because it makes it much easier as you get ready to sew. And I would also suggest, when you make your pattern piece for your person, that you date it and put their name on it. Give it to them as a present or keep it. People grow larger, they grow smaller over time, and um, it's nice to know at what point in your life you made that pattern piece to know if it still fits you. Also, on most commercial patterns, the pattern itself has the amount of ease that is located on the in the actual fabric that you're making, so that's one thing you can do is to put the total amount of inches that the pattern makes, if that makes any sense at all. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and do the markings. When I transfer the dart markings, I'm basically going to keep the pattern on. This is the wrong side of the fabric, by the way. Here's our fold. Here's how it looked. When you're doing this, you're going to want to have this top piece of fabric, your wrong side of the fabric. So the inside is your right side of the fabric. If you need to, something like this, go ahead and write wrong side or WS or whatever works for you to remember as you go about cutting it and sewing it, which is which. So I'm going to go ahead and make the darts now. I'm going to come in here, and I don't know if you guys can see this, but I'm following that marking right there. I'm just literally going to be folding the paper over, going in, that's my first mark, go the other way. Everything's lining up here. I'm going to make that second mark. the end of my mark. There's one there. And one there. Okay. That's the biggest marks we want for this pattern. On that side. We'll go ahead and do it for this side. Some very intrepid people can probably do darts without marking it. 
I am not one of those people. And we also, a little bit differently, have our quirks, those lovely things that make us unique. Here's our wrong side and the darts that we've transferred the markings to. There's no major markings on this one that we haven't already cut into to align the fabric pieces together. Here we have a cutout of our bodice empire waist top that we've made. We're on the wrong side of the material. You can see the arrows, which indicate our, um, basically our, our bust line. And we're gonna go ahead and construct these darts for our bust first. And we do that by essentially folding them over on that wrong side and aligning them <coughs> with that area and that area and then folding it. So I'm going to go ahead and just turn this over. Again, you might even be able to see how that works like that. And I'm going to go ahead and start pinning this area here. Again, you just want to try to keep it as close to the other side of the dart as you can. You can see where that's, that pin is poking through here. So we know we're, we're right. I'm go here in a few places. When you um, actually go to sew this dart, one of the important things that you'll want to do is stop about one sew thread away from the point. And I'll show you why you do that. Um, so it makes a nice, crisp, even dart line without puckers. So I'm going to go ahead and start sewing right along that line that we've made. To the to the end of this, you will not back space. You will not reinforce that area where it will actually end up bad. smaller and smaller until it reaches that point at the end. And like I said, you're going to want to stop right before you reach that little end. And then you're going to pull about four inches away. And I'll show you how to cut that so it makes that point nice and tight. Here's what it looks like sewn. 
One of the biggest things about making darts is making sure that you do what you should do with most of your clothes, and that is press it. Pressing is very, very important. But here we are at the the end. I'm going to take my my little pin right at that end dot. I'm going to bring my two my two threads that form that end together like this. And then I'm going to make a circle, come around. And pull those through. And then I'm going to let that pin guide see that but mm -hmm. now let that pin guide the end of that knot make a little tighter but you'll be able to see what I'm talking about there's your knot you can make it a little tighter I would recommend making it a little tighter again you just Take them both around the pin. Make yourself a loop. If you can actually do it. <laughs> and then bring it down as tight as you can. Okay, now, you want to bring that in just a little bit more at the base, but you'll get the, the general idea, and then you snip it off. Right here. And then you press it. You're first going to press it this way, and then you're going to press it around so that when you look at the other side, you'll end up not having a huge pucker there. And that's part of the pressing that you do. You can see how that doesn't pucker as much when you do that. And that, again, is the, pr the, the pressing. And I've got one here. I'll show you in just a second. These two are have already been pressed and constructed. You can kind of see how they should look when they're done. They're nice and flat and crisp. And the only way to really obtain that is to press it. Here's how it looks on the other side. Okay, so once you construct your darts on either side, you do this side as well, then you're basically going to cut it and then cut it, you don't have to, but I do, so that it's just a slight cut here and then just press it down. So you end up with it looking like that when you're done. These are cut darts that have been cut down. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other dart on this bodice and then you'll end up putting the back together by first right sides together, sewing your shoulder together and then here at your sides and then that will give you your bodice top. Okay we're going to talk about the um, skirt piece now and here's Ariel for our handy dandy modeling and basically what we need to measure is we need, need to measure for the empire waist so I'm going to actually get the measurement here below the bust and then I'm also going to get a measurement uh, for where
where she wants it from her empire waist for however long she wants it to end. So tell me how, so long, how long you want that to hit just above my knee. Okay, so here's her empire waist. You always want to add an inch on the top for your seam and an inch or five eighths inch on the bottom for the hem. So about right here. Does that feel right? Yeah. Okay. So that's what you're going to want to use for your short measurement. And then the long measurement of the square will hit a little bit longer. And basically, after you've got your measurement for your waist, you want to add two inches for the ease an additional two inches for the wearing ease, depending on how loose you need your battle dress to be. If you are planning on wearing anything underneath your battle dress, you're gonna want to add a little bit more ease. If you're not planning on wearing underneath anything underneath it, then you can add a little bit less ease. But in any case, whatever measurement you get here, you must add at least two inches so that they can move. So the way you do that is you take the measurement, you add two inches, and then you basically are going to get the diameter and the radius of your measurement. And you can do that by taking your measurement, which is the circumference, and plugging it into any, you know, Google it, look up circumference and how to calculate diameter for, from circumference and basically plug that number in that you've got with the two inches added and then divide that by two to get your radius. And the reason we do that, um, I don't know if I can see that or not. What's going on in the paper? Yeah. So the reason we do that is here we have our waist measurement with the additional two inches. And we're going to be folding our cloth into basically a square, a smaller square. And so we want to know what the distance is from here to here and what the distance is from here to here. And so because we have this measurement, which is the circumference, we can Google it and say calculate, calculate the, the diameter or the radius from circumference and then put your number in plus two inches. So we took Lirio's measurements and basically what we've ended up doing is two things. We've gotten the measurement we need for the outside perimeter of the square. And that measurement is the length that she wants it to be and we cut our square to that length plus one inch for the seam here and one inch for the hem, so plus two. So basically we had to make sure that this short end, which is gonna hit her right here, was at least the length that we needed it to be and that the long end, which is right here, is going to hit her where we, where we want it to be. Then we have to make sure that the circle we cut is basically the same measurement as her waist, the area right here, plus two inches. I did another additional two inches, so four inches total, so that um, she can find it if she chooses to wear something underneath it. So this basically what we've done is we cut out the big square, so we have the length, and now I'm gonna show you how you're going to cut out the other one. We went ahead and took her measurements and we plug that circumference right here into a computer program so that it told us the diameter and the radius. Now what I did is I folded the cloth that is now a, the right size rectangle and so you have your first fold, this is the fold line, and this is the fold line. We made a smaller circle. It makes it easier this way to cut out. 
when you do cut this out, make very certain that your edges line up perfectly. So how do I know how to get this waist measurement correctly? Basically, I know, having gotten the diameter and the radius, that I need a certain number of inches in order to ensure that the circumference is right. So I basically took my ruler, went out the amount of inches into um, to make the radius, and then I went the same amount of inches here. And then you can also do it here if you want. And then I basically approximated a circle from those measurements. And I cut that out. And then, when we go to attach the skirt to the top of the bodice, you want to make sure that you mark the center front, which is right here, all the way down. That's where your slit is going to be. And then you're going to want to do the same to make your center back. And there's the center back right there. And I marked it here as well. Those are important measurements as we go to insert and attach the skirt piece to the bodice. And when we take this out, this is what we end up with. Here's our center front, and then our center back, and then the sides, which is it right here, very soon. Okay, so we have finished showing, uh, sewing our, our bodice top, and as you can see, it's hitting about right here. And that's where we want it to hit, even if we want an empire waist, because we need to have a little bit of room for our seam allowance. So that when it's done, it will fit up here. And I went ahead and what we're going to do next is basically get the skirt portion that we've made ready to fit with the bodice portion like this. Um, I'm actually not going to be sewing a white bodice to this black material because the patron wanted to have a black bodice. So I went ahead and and sewn the black bodice and you can but you can still kind of see hopefully what it looks like pretty much the same and with the curvy parts and next that we want to do before we attach the bodice to the skirt is we want to um, finish the edges we want to um, basically sew up our hems and then make a slit in our center front and sew um, our center front seam here. So you can see that I marked the center front line. I'm going to cut that and then I'm going to literally be going along and sew up a hem, very small hem, all the way around on all of my edges including my center front. You want to make sure again to mark your center front because when we attach it to the bodice, you're going to attach the center front of the skirt to the center front of the bodice and then the center back of the bodice and on the sides and that's how we'll pin it to put it together. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, so we have our bodice, and um, I, like I said, I'm working on the skirt, but I did want to tell you, if we're not going to line your bodice, then you're going to want to use some kind of, of treatment for your raw edges here, and I've decided um, to use bias tape to fold and, and finish these raw edges on, on the bodice. One way to do that is by buying ready-made bias tape. You can buy this in the store. Um, they have double fold, single fold. This one, I actually have a double folded wide width 
you can kind of see. You can make your own too, it's a little harder to do, but um, you can do it. And, and then that way you can also match whatever color you're using on your on your bodice if it's a if it's an off or weird color. But the the way that I would recommend attaching a bias tape, uh, there's two ways. You can either just take it along with fold and just stick it right over the top like that and then pin it and sew it. You can kind of see that there um, as you go along. Just make sure the problem that happens when you do that is if you don't catch it right on the on the proper edge, they may, there may be some places where it will pull off. Rather, and you also have that excess of um, amount of fabric that you use as part of the pattern, so you have to take that into account. What I do is I unfold the edge, and you can see here this little channel that's made by unfolding that edge, and I literally just sewed right along that edge. Here's the raw edge of the bias tape and the raw edge of the bodice, and I just put those two together. I started right on the seam line. You always want to do that. Start on the seam line so that when you're budding, as you come along, you're budding it right on the seam line. It looks a little crisper and cleaner when you do that. So I'll continue to unfold right along that raw edge and sew along the channel that we've created here. And then once that channel is sewn in, really it's a matter of coming along, folding it over, just like that, and then sewing either on the front or the back side, just along this top. You can either make that a decorative con contrasting stitch, or you can just make it the same color as what you're making you actually won't end up seeing this stitch. The stitch that you'll see is the one that you use to secure the bottom edge. And then that'll be how it looks. Okay, so we have finished bias taping the raw edges of the sleeves as well as the scoop neckline. And you can see we put a little bit of a decorative top stitch on it and that's what it will look like when the bodice piece is finished. Then we're going to go ahead and move to finishing the edges of the skirt and then we'll go ahead and attach the bodice to the skirt. So we've went ahead and finished all of the edges including the center front um, open. You can see kind of that top stitch there and we have this lovely skirt that we need to attach to our bodice. And so the first thing that we will do is a slight overlap of our center front. And you can accomplish that by just simply overlapping it or by pinning it, whatever works for you. But it should be very secure in the way that that overlap is occurring. This goes in, tucks into the skirt, so the right sides are together. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. And there's my center front. And this is very important to get right. If you need to do it and check and recheck your measurements, then this is the, the point where you'll want to do that. Because it's quite important. The nice thing is, is I have this on a fold, so it's easier for me to ensure that I'm hitting it right where I need to be. And I'm just gonna pin through all layers. And that's center front, okay? And then I need to do the same in the back. So you can see the center front, and here's the center back. 
which has also got that fold. So you take that fold and then you find your center back and attach that to where you placed your center back. Okay, so now is the time that we're going to attach the bodice front, or top rather, to the skirt. And we do that by taking the bodice and basically inserting it into the skirt. You want the bodice and skirt to be right sides together. And then what we're going to do is first match up the four critical points that we need to match up and then we go ahead and pin the rest of the way. The four critical points in your matchup are first your center front. You can either sew across or pin, whatever works for you. I've sewn here just so it's easier. You can see how I've overlapped our front a little. <laughs> um, right here and this is the center front of the bodice as you can maybe see as I pull that out there. So that's the center front to center front. And then remember when you marked your skirt initially, I had you also mark the center back. And there's my center back measurement. Basically lined it up with the dot that was on the skirt and pinned it. And then the side seam from the bodice to the side of the skirt, which should essentially be coming to a point like that. And then again on the other side, you should essentially have it coming together from the side seam to the point. All right, so once we have that, we are going to start pinning the rest of the way, the waist, basically try to keep being, keeping the ease um, within those those borders. And when I talk about ease, I mean you've got a lot of material that you're going to need to basically pin in this quadrant. And so the best way to do that is to go from one pin here to the other pin here, and then grab your extra and take its half out of the middle and then pin there. Okay, and then you do that again. You can also do what they call ease stitching or basting. There's a lot of different methods. I'm just doing this with pins. So then again, from here to here, the equidistant, and then we just pull it in again. And you can do this with base stitching or however you want to do it. I'm just doing it with pins. And then you do it again until you have pretty much all pinned up in that quadrant. And that means that you won't get any puckers um, that are, are not, that don't look like they're they're pretty much all the way around, so it looks better. This isn't rocket science. If you feel like it's not quite on, redo it. That's the lovely, wonderful things about pinning, is it makes it that easy to fixed puckers so that you're looking at them pretty much aligned. So we're going to go ahead and do that all the way around the entire perimeter and then we sew. Okay, so this is our finished product. You can see we have our um, finished neckline here and our arms. We have the um, pinned bodice to the skirt, the skirt front. Right here and then as we go down you can see how that plays out along the bottom when you pull it down how it looks 
and then kind of on a person. How it look. And that's how you make a bow dress.